we have this uh, very very important information when it comes to the standoff that has been going on between the Indian and the Chinese troop for some days now the Indian and the Chinese troop remain engaged in a standoff in several disputed areas in eastern Ladakh now with both the nations refusing to bow down the confrontation could actually become the biggest military face-off after the Doklam episode in 2017 the biggest concern for Indian army has been the presence of Chinese troops around several key points including the post of KM 120 along the Darbuk Shakyok Daulat Beg Oldie Road in the Galwan Valley. And in fact, uh, these are the visuals uh, that we are getting for you. Um, Remember, there has, of course, been a lot of uh, back and forth when it comes to uh, this particular story. Uh, there have been reports of uh, this confrontation going on for quite some time. And as uh, uh, I just told you some time back, this actually could end up being one of the most serious confrontation between India and China uh, at the border. Uh, but at this point in time, of course, uh, you know, not much is being said from uh, the side of India. Uh, we are, in fact, trying to get more clarity when it comes to this standoff at the border and uh, like we said uh, these stories are being reported they, they are being reported in the last few days the exact uh, location that we have told you from where uh, such stories are coming out is the post of KM 120 along the Darbuk Shakyong Dolad Beg Oldie Road in the Galwan Valley now Nikunj is joining us on the phone line Nikunj uh, uh, what is the latest when it comes to the standoff between India and China well, Megha, the standoff continues, and uh, as I've been saying, that unlike Doklam, there is a different kind of crisis there. Doklam was a tight junction between India, Bhutan, and China. It was basically Bhutanese territory, and India, Bhutan being India's protectorate, we were there in protection of Bhutan. But in Gavlam area of uh, Ladakh, it's just straight on between India and China, and uh, both forces obviously have amassed troops. And China has, you know, been disturbing our routine long-range patrols that have been going on in that area for a substantial period of time without any objection from the Chinese side for the last 30 to 40 days. And now that it has reached a crescendo, obviously there are diplomatic interventions that are required that are happening quite clearly at the level of the field commanders, even senior field commanders at the brigadier level. The situation has refused to diffuse itself. So uh, the, but the latest, of course, is that the Chinese are dropping further hints that now, now trying to evacuate their citizens from India, which many other countries have also done in the keeping in mind the COVID crisis. But at the timing of the Chinese move is quite clearly raising eyebrows. So uh, in, in, in what overarching indications are that at this moment, at least, Chinese do not want the tensions to uh, go down. I mean, they, they, they want the issue to simmer. And that is something that the Indian side obviously wants to uh, pipe down and that is something that is not happening at this point of time that is why the force built up in the entire region of the dispute between India and China from Uttarakhand to uh, uh, Ladakh as we are seeing and reports are coming right now. All right. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, when it comes to the response from the side of India, Nikunj, what is it that we are hearing from the Indian government? What is the stand that we are taking? Because, you know, uh, honestly, we've been trying to get more and more, but very little is coming out of uh, at least government of India on this. Officially, of course, they will not comment other than the fact that the Ministry of External Affairs has made its position absolutely clear that this is Indian territory. There is no dispute on this side of the line of actual control, LAC, as it is known between India and China. More critically, it is the Chinese who have been disturbing our patrols, on which um, something on which uh, Indian side has gone on record. Now, uh, as the standoff continues, the problem is that they, with these kind of face-off, officially it is still not being described face-off because... There is a larger gap between the two sides, troops of two sides. But any inadvertent move on the on the side on the part of any side can actually lead to a flare-up, which can see uh, further aggravation of situation, as we have seen uh, in the past on Pangongso, where at least 50 to 70 soldiers on Indian side have got injured, according to sources. So that is something that uh, India is very keen to avoid. Chinese are giving no impression of that. Chinese, of course, have been maintaining that. They are only patrolling their side of the uh, line of control, as line of actual control, as they have been doing. So it is the 
in terms of diffusing the tension, the Chinese will certainly have to make the first move because government of India has categorically said that they are the ones who are disturbing our long term. Okay. Right. Right, Nikunj, uh, thank you so much for joining us and getting us the latest uh, on the standoff between India and China. Now, I have uh, Mr. Arasan Singh also joining us uh, live on the broadcast. Mr. Singh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, you know, these reports that are emanating uh, from the border area, India and China, about the Chinese troops entering allegedly three kilometers inside into the Indian territory, challenging the Indian troops at multiple locations. Do you actually see the situation aggravating from here on, sir? Uh, no, um, uh, what is different this time is that, um, uh, well, I, I, first I must tell you that I was in this area of Pengongso in way back in 86, 87. I have carried, uh, taken out, you know, uh, uh, at least half a dozen patrols. And normal patrolling used to go, there was never, you know, incidents like this. But remember, that was the time when, you know, when uh, Deng had the coin that, you know, uh, proverb that, you know, hide your strength and, you know, bide your time. And, you know, also that slogan, peaceful rise of China. So now, thereafter, all these activities, you know, started increasing. And now, I mean, this time is a little different from, you know, uh, because firstly, it happens during this, you know, uh, this pandemic period, which has its own, you know, dynamics as far as, you know, the world and particularly China is concerned. And, uh, well, it is a part of, you know, a lot of things are happening as far as the, the, something big things are happening in South China. See, there, there are, you know, there are very strong positions as far as Taiwan is concerned in the Taiwan Straits. A Vietnamese vessel has been sunk. They have declared two districts, you know, in Spratly and Pasal Islands. They have threatened the Malaysians. And, you know, then there was also a, a steep, a steep rise in, you know, jihadism, uh, park-sponsored jihadism. So this is the, you know, uh, uh, in this uh, ongoing pandemic period, the world order is definitely changing. It's, it's definitely changing. And I see, uh, and of course, what has happened uh, 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 in Nepal and what people also call wolf warrior uh, di di diplomacy. So this time it is it's different. I'm sorry to say we have to take a much larger, larger perspective, you know. They are creating counter, you know, they, they are creating pressure points on you. Because the Chinese feel that you are the ones in the post-pandemic period, you will be the ones who will, you know, who will compete with the China and the world is interested that India increases its capacities. Not, I'm talk, not talking about military capacities, the overall national cap capacities to compete with China. Now, this is going to be contested very, very fiercely. Now, we have only two options. Either, either we capitulate to China and, you know, uh, Acquired by its you know, hegemony in 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 in, 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 the, okay. in in the Asian region, or we compete. So I belong to the cost uh, cost yeah. uh, who, who thinks that we we, we should compete. Why well, mm -hmm. I'm telling you this that these incidents are going to you know further increase. The intensity is not going to die, die down any uh, anywhere mm -hmm. soon. And we should okay. be uh, so, uh, prepared, Asin, prepared so you, for it. You think, sir, you think, sir, that the intensity of the situation is only going to aggravate from here on. Uh, Shrinjoy Chaudhary, our national affairs editor, is also joining us uh, live on the broadcast. Shrinjoy, uh, as one of the reports uh, is, uh, uh, you know, suggesting that the Chinese have brought in large numbers of uh, their men at the border, at the LAC, and the troops have been uh, deployed at various locations along the LAC, and that uh, the same report also talks about India mirroring their deployment at that uh, at those locations where the China has increased, increased their men. Uh, what is the situation as per the government of India officially should enjoy uh, as far as the standoff is concerned and how are we increasing our deployment in those areas? Well, uh, let's look at the root of the problem, Mega. The root of the problem lies in the fact that India is building a road inside its, its own territory. India is building infrastructure inside its own territory. And this is for local people there. And this is what China does not understand. China has built roads in that area, in the Galwad Nala area, when there are no local people. Now, China objects to India building roads in the area, building other infrastructure in the area, which is why Indian troops have been moved there to protect those pieces of infrastructure. The Chinese 
do not want those uh, uh, roads and other things to exist. So this is where the problem has been. There have been two scuffles uh, in early May, but, but there have been minor ones. The big, big issue is the fact that to protect the infrastructure India has built, Indian troops have rushed there and the Chinese have decided that they too will up the ante and have brought in a large number of troops. So there are large number of troops, several thousand on both sides, right on the LSC in the Galwan Nala area. This is in Ladakh, uh, in northeastern Ladakh. Hmm. The closest area you hmm. would have thought of is really the Nubra Valley. Now, that is really the problem hmm. after which there has been an escalation. On the diplomatic side, I know that there has been talk and discussions in Beijing and in Delhi. The Chinese ambassador to India was here in South Block okay. just about a week ago. There have been serious okay. discussions on the issue and it is still okay. going on. All right. So the discussions are on at the diplomatic level. Uh, I just quickly want to take one question with Major General uh, G.D. Bakshi, uh, who's also on the broadcast. Uh, sir, just like Shunjoy pointed out, the root of the problem is the construction of the road, but that's well within the Indian territory. And yet, this has seen an escalation at the LAC. How does India fight this? Uh, look, uh, we should put it for that. As far as the Chinese are concerned, they understand that. What we have to understand is that on this border, the last shots were fired. Actually, major exchange of fire was in 67. And 75, I'm told there were a few shots exchanged. But thereafter, there has been no kinetic action. Now, all this troop build up is fine. I will start to worry if the action escalates from the level of pushing, shoving, punching, boxing, wrestling, etc., down to kinetic action in terms of exchange of fire. That hasn't happened so far. So far, uh, China has backed down. And uh, I would think that China is doing it for two reasons. One is that China is desperately worried that India is now staking, uh, you know, all-out claims to its own legal, uh, you know, tender in POK and Gilgit Baltistan. China has invested so heavily in that uh, uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor that it is now finding that its investment is all up in the air. That is number one. Number two is that uh, uh, China has, uh, you know, uh, is trying to get very aggressive with all those countries where the industry that post-corona is likely to get out of China you know, may find future birth. About a thousand firms want to pull out of China, American, Japanese, Taiwanese, Korean, etc., etc. And uh, India offers one of the best uh, alternate uh, locations. So the Chinese are trying to get muscular mm -hmm. with all such nations like Vietnam, India, etc., Indonesia, Malaysia, where this investment okay. could possibly go. And the last point that I would like to make is okay. that China seems to be getting aggressive and pushing in yes, all sir. directions. It is in a very, very, uh, you know, uh, right, strange sir. situation. It is pushing in all directions. East China, South China, okay. Taiwan, and simultaneously on the Indian border. Right. Pakistan is its uh, sidekick. Right, sir. One is hoping, yes, sir. One is hoping that the situation does not escalate from here on. It gets diluted and everything is back to normal there at the LSE. Uh, um, uh, Major General uh, G.D. Bakshi and uh, Mr. Arasan Singh, Shunjoy Chaudhary, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and giving your perspective on uh, this current development between India and China.